All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. In this video, I'm going to be putting together a bushcraft uh, pack axe with this Collins boys axe head. This weighs in at uh, 1.88 pounds. I'll be putting this on this 28 inch boys axe handle I picked up at the hardware store. So they didn't have 26 or 24, so I'm going to go 28, which is fine. I'm I'm six foot one, so a longer axe is, is nice for me to have. So normally my go-to camp axe is this Collins Hudson Bay. And I've had this for a long time and I really like it. So I'm going on a canoe trip um, and I have flipped a canoe before. And if I flipped a canoe and I lost this axe, it would tear me up pretty good. So I'm gonna put together something that something that's kind of more of a beater, um, something that if I, if I lose or, or damage, it's not going to hurt my feelings. So what we'll be doing on this piece is turning it into more of a carving axe. So I'll put, I'll put a grind on it that's good for carving. Um, I will be smoothing out, uh, putting a bevel on the pole so that, you know, if you're going to grip it and, and do any type of carving, um, it'll be a little easier on the hands. And I will smooth these edges on the bottom a little bit better also again. So that index finger, if you're carving, um, it, it's not going to tear your index finger up. We will leave the top sharp. So I'll actually sharpen this a little bit more so that I can strike a ferro rod on it. And then other than that, the, the head, I'll, I'll polish it to 220, which really isn't even polishing, but I'll, I'll smooth it out to 220. And then once all of the, the grinding is done on the axe head, I'll put it back into a citric acid bath to give it a, a nice etch uh, to bring that gray uh, look back out so it's not too shiny. Um, I like I like a little bit more subdued, a um, little bit of patina, you know, so, so it'll go back in the citric acid and it'll be a good looking piece. So stay tuned and we'll get to it. So the wire wheel's done nice to, to get some of those scratch marks out of there. There's still, still a little bit there, but once it comes out of the acid bath, um, we, we won't see them very much. Three ounces of citric acid into about three quarts of water and stir it up real good. So we'll let this sit for about 12 hours in the in the acid solution. It should have a nice gray tint to it after about 12 hours. If it doesn't have the color that we're looking for, we'll leave it in for another six hours or so. Now, if this still had rust on it, it would be 24 hours minimum um, to get the rust off. Sometimes, sometimes I'll go 24 hours and then I'll sand it and then I'll go another 24 hours. So we'll check back in on this in the morning. All right, so I, I let it soak for 12 hours. It was still a little too shiny, so I put it in for another another 12 hours. So it's been in 24 hours, and we'll we'll pull it out and see if it's where we want it. There we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. I like the contrast in the 
from the bit to the to the cheeks something about that look I really like it I've seen it where the entire outside the the outside of the steel is is the dark color all the way back and then I've also seen them like this one where the outside of the steel the outside of the the pole is got the gray and then there's dark in the middle so I'm not exactly sure how that works when they're tempering it but but uh, yeah it looks good I'm gonna rinse this off in water and then put some oil on it so I have read that some people will take and put uh, put the the work piece once it comes out of the the acid bath they'll put it in a very in a basic solution so baking soda to to neutralize the acid now I have I have done that and I have a lot of the times just rinsed it in water and I don't know um, I've never seen any negative effects from not putting it in a basic solution so the oil I'm going to use is going to be raw flax oil or linseed oil so this is not boiled linseed oil uh, this is sold as flax oil and it's food safe so again I want to be able to use this as a as a kitchen tool I want to be able to process food with this and it it'll leave a little bit of a film but but I gotta I gotta get something on it and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put vegetable oil on it uh, I don't want the vegetable oil to to go rancid So immediately, as soon as it's dry, before it has the chance to get any, any moisture on the steel, I want to get oil on it. So. Now if I'm, if I'm doing a, an axe that's not going to be used for food preparation, then I do, uh, I'll use rim oil, uh, gun oil. Or I'll use uh, just WD-40, you know. So, and when we're oiling heads, I like to get oil in the eye. All right, next I'm going to strip this varnish off of here so that it'll take oil. And, and I'm going to... I'm going to thin this section of the handle because it's too thick. If this is thicker than the cheeks of your axe, and when it goes into a cut, well, when it goes into a piece of firewood, if you're splitting firewood, the, the axe head being thinner than the handle, the handle is going to hang up on the wood. It's going to, it's going to damage the handle going through a piece of firewood. So I'm going to thin this out. And as you can see with these, you know, store-bought handles, they're not perfect, but you can see this is, is not proper. So the, the handle is a little, a little off, but there's enough there that I'm going to, I'm going to be able to work out the little kinks that it has. So I do like the grain on this one. It has a little bit of grain run out here on the Fawn's foot. Which is which is fine, but I I do like these streaks of the of the heartwood coming through. I think it looks good. It should this should take oil well, and it should be a, a good looking a good looking piece. So I'll strip it. I'll strip the varnish, and then I'll get it on the belt sander and start uh, correcting any issues in the handle, and then then we'll get ready and and hang the hang the head. So I'll just take a carpet knife I don't know exactly why uh, the handle manufacturers go through the extra step of putting the varnish on it's a pain in the butt to take it back off but it's something that's got to be done if you're going to run a, a hardware store handle
So if you're fitting an axe head to a handle and you're using a belt sander to remove material from the eye of the handle, um, you can easily, easily get carried away. Uh, so, you know, I definitely not 60 or, or 80 grit, you know, uh, 120, 220, 220 is just fine. Uh, that way you don't remove too much. So it's just step by step, right? So I sanded the, the handle down here on the eye and the head slips on real nice. And I've got it all fitted and I think that I'm ready. This last little bit of sanding, I'll be ready to, uh, to mount the, to hang the head. Fits on real nice. The only issue that I do not like is that the eye of the handle doesn't fill out the entire eye of the axe head. And and I even I even sunk it down a little bit more. So I got the wrong size eye. That was my mistake. But I'm going to go ahead and go through with it, and I think, I think it'll work just fine. So everything else is, is seated really nice. So a couple, a couple blows with the hammer, and, and I'll be ready to send the wedge in. So I've let the wedge dry for about 24 hours before I go to cutting. And now we'll clean that eye up a little bit. I'm not totally sure why the why the belt that I'm using is is burning the end grain here so I'm gonna be switching out a belt to put a grind on this so maybe a new belt will will clean that up a little bit I don't mind if it's got that burn on it anyway So I'm going to run some 320 sandpaper on it and then I'll probably go up to 800 after that. Uh, so I just take a piece of sandpaper and I just rubber band it to 
a piece of wood so this is I don't know one by three and a half or a one by three quarter inch uh, piece of wood and I'll just basically run it like a file so now I'm gonna switch to 800 grit Take a little uh, raw linseed oil and oil up this handle and we'll be close to done. So over the next, uh, over the next week or so when I come into the shop and I, I think about it, I'll put another coat on and, uh, I'll, pr I'll probably try to put three or four coats on over the next week and just really get it to soak in and then and then that should be good all right so the only thing missing now is a sheath or a mask for this but I'm waiting on some uh, some pieces to come in the mail to build the sheath and and I can't wait for the sheath to go test this so let's go out in the forest and see how it chops Well, I'm liking the axe. The, uh, the 90 degree edge works well. Um, I think I could tune it in a little bit, but the ergonomics are nice. Um, I'm glad I rounded out the bottom and the pole because uh, when I'm carving that, that does see a lot of contact with my hands. But overall, it's a, it's a good little bushcraft pack axe and I'm really happy with it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.